was born in the Port Authority General in New York City with throngs of commuters rushing here and there to work with elephants of various assorted colored decorated crazy hippies running here and there hopeless personalities talking to themselves or whoever else they were carrying with them walking to the Port Authority and so mainly some travelers who were going here and there a little bit the world. And into this fix, by external vision, and this is a very small figure, in several on robes, carrying a bag and a umbrella, a white pointy shoes, very gentle to me. At that particular time, no one could have guessed what he had just undergone. And no one could have guessed what he was about to accomplish. He had just left some short time before India on the steamship Pellet Griffin. And only one person was there to see him off. Very unceremonious. And when he arrived in New York City, he said, I didn't know whether to go left or right. There was no one to greet him. He had just endured two heart attacks, an immense cloud of seasickness, and finally here he was uh, in the Board of Authority of New York, about to establish a revolution that the world had never seen before. It wasn't a political revolution, and it wasn't an economic revolution. It was a revolution that takes place at the deepest core of one's being, a spiritual revolution. And by his, by his wealth, actually he was a distinction. He had nothing. No, hardly any money, nothing. But he had two things. He had faith in the words of his spiritual master and faith in the Holy Name. And by the end of this, led the state to these two things. He established a revolution that transformed the entire earth planet into a holy gift. And I should have heard that it was traveling all over the world, going to visit these different places that our father established. It was one thing that happened on the journey on the boat, and with a little poetic license, it was all around me. I'd like to use it as a frame of reference to go up by and show the father a little bit. But on the boat, on, when he was going across the boat, he had become very sick, and one night in a dream, the Das Avatar appeared before him in a boat. And they encouraged him, please continue, go on your journey. And understanding that he had Krishna in his heart, and understanding that wherever Krishna is, all his various incarnations accompany him. I'll try to again with a little poetic license. Lord, I call it in terms of his how he manifested with so many aspects of the dust of the earth. Just like Matsya, at the time of universal devastation, he came like a boat and saved the Vedas. Lord Shiva Prabhupada embarked on a journey. Himself, the Vedas for Sangha, but carrying the right and fruit of the Vedas, rescuing him from our pressure and establishing and delivering it to the entire world. Just like Korma, Korma carried on his back and made it possible for the churning of the ocean of nectar. So on the strong back of Shiva Prabhupada's Siddhar Seva, thousands and thousands of pieces of transcendental literature were churned. Billions and billions of pieces of prasadam were distributed, both to the demons and to the devotees of life. This is the mercy and power of Shilapata. Like, I may go out of order to the left of the Hindu. But just as Lord Rama descended to the lowest regions of the Gavadana Ocean to uplift the earth planet, so I should have followed as our Shamari Hindus would testify. He descended into the darkest regions of this material world, the lower east side of the earth, where illicit sex was prominent, where intoxication was the name of the day, and with so much degradation had been taking place, and he chose there to establish a storefront 
and begins preaching with the one day spread throughout the world. The, the degradation there on the Lower East Side was such that um, one day he came down from his quarters and some devotees were living in the temple were not able to follow very strictly. So he said, you should know that cigarette smoking is not favorable for spiritual life. So he smoked one in the morning and one in the evening. This is a broad language for us. You would have to step over the Lowry Mountain sometimes to get into his apartment. But nothing stops him from his mission because of his faith and the Holy Name and in the words of his spiritual master. On another occasion, he was giving class and, um, oh, this is a bit better. One time in the early days, somebody who had done so much drugs, they were so crazy. And they came to the father, they were chanting and said, Come on. When I'm chanting, I see this beautiful white light. Oh, uh, he said, well, keep chanting in the little one. <laughs> he was so expert in attention, pulling in our hearts and pulling it away from the rock star of intoxication. He was such an amazing personality. And then, as, who's next? At the rock. As the Shri there's so many ways to approach this, but he ripped the shreds. The scientific conception with the, with the store of knowledge that was the basis of our Western civilization. In order to establish the Krishna conscious paradigm in this world, Father came and saw that the scientific paradigm that life comes from matter was the root of all the evils of Western civilization. In our morning walks, and in his general discussions in classes, he would say, regarding the materialistic scientists, we kick on their face with boot like this. He was so bold in his preaching that no one could defeat his argument. He said, we say to the scientists, if life comes from matter and your science is so advanced, then let us see who create one mosquito in your laboratory. And he would say, you say, well, maybe we'll do it in the future. He said, that's like a postgame check. In the future, I'll give you a thousand dollars. Then you give me five dollars right now. So they never could create life from matter. And he preached very strongly. The Krishna conscious conception destroyed the influence of the scientists. Who's next? Bhavadev. Bhavadev, when we think of Bhavadev, that will hide with his king, studying, step by step, marching throughout the world, claiming this material world, this earth planet, on behalf of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his spiritual master, spreading the holy name everywhere, gallantly and majestically striding to the earth. There's no one who can fit that description of that word, majestic, like Srila Prabhupada. He was majesty personified. He was the as Diksha Guru with the sonified form of Krishna. So majestic, he would be in his presence and he would be like watching. He was so amazing just to observe his activities. Next, Parashram. In this case, I'd like to talk about how the Chachriya leaders of our society, how public would cut their fight. Uh, there was one sannyasi, uh, later on he became Guru. And he was in the kitchen, he was very proud of his intelligence. And Baba said to him, Big, big brain, if you can't even make it, your body. <laughs> and another occasion, he was with, um, uh, oh, one sannyasi who also was Mel Guru. They were on a morning walk, and this sannyasi, by his own admission, was trying to impress Baba with the different shlokas he had learned. So he said some verse, and Baba looked at him and he said, there are many verses. Another time he said it, and Baba just flared at him. The third time he did the same thing, and Baba looked at him and he said, Don't try to enjoy your spiritual master. Just serve him. That's something that we can meditate on for the rest of our lives. And on another occasion, there was one that asked me later in the game group, who was suddenly uh, dissing the ladies. And finally, Father turned to him and said, Why are you speaking like this? So the problem is, 
and you want to get married, and no one will have you. <laughs> so I'll go back to humor, to the sword of knowledge in so many ways, just having the drive of this disciple. I would like Lord Ramachandra, taught by the spirit of Krishna consciousness all over the world, attacking the citadels of Maya, like Lanka, with an army of monkeys. <laughs> there are some exceptions, but I was the one of the monkeys, I can tell you that. And sometimes it still comes out of my day. But some people object to the fact that it probably refers to us as monkeys. But actually, it's so much more his glorification to understand what he accomplished with what he had to work with. So much to the ability to transform uh, womenizers, leaders, young users, aspiring Vaishnavas. It was a miracle. They asked him once, how did he go through miracles like Jesus Christ? He pointed out to his disciples and he said, these are my miracles. Next. Oh, my Lord Balaram, he inspired spiritual strength, Bala, into the hearts of his disciples. Father was standing for his group of his Rahasa couples to England to open up the preaching there. And they said to Papa, how will anyone accept what we're saying? And then Papa told the story that in his childhood, he had watched this movie about Charlie Chaplin. I don't know if you know Charlie Chaplin, but he's a silent movie star. He's very, very brilliant. In this particular movie, Papa was relating that Charlie Chaplin was in a dance with his date. And he went to sit on the bench outside, and some young Christians ripped his coattails partially off the back of his coat. Anyway, when he went back on the dance floor, people were looking at him like laughing and very, you know, kind of uh, looking at him in a way which was kind of demeaning. So that understanding what was happening, he went into the bathroom and he looked and he saw what they had done, and he had a scheme. So he ripped his coat tail all the way up to the top. Then he went out of the dance floor and started dancing with great enthusiasm. And everybody seeing his enthusiasm, they began to look at him, and then they all began to rip their coat tails and dance in the same way. And Papa said, you just really have to be enthusiastic, and everyone will follow you. And they did it, and the Beatles came, and the Hare Krishna Mantra became a world household word, but by the power and inspiration of Shri Prabhupada. Yes. Lord Buddha, he preached a hymnsa, not violence. But I was saying you can't understand anything about God or spiritual life if you're beating animals, if you're killing animals. And not only that, he promoted vegetarianism more than anyone else ever has done in this world. More place the vegetarian food were distributed. And um, not only vegetarian food, but Prasanna. By getting people to take transcendental vegetarian food, eventually they would come to the line of Vaishnava. Baba called it kitchen religion, Krishna consciousness. And also to show you his mood of nonviolence, there was one sannyasi, he should have done this for me. He was, um, Baba said there was some crumbs of sweet on the table, he asked him to clean the table. So very gingerly and delicately, Shri Daniswami was clean, trying to avoid the hands that were on the table. The brother said, just see, two years ago you would have killed them, but now you have become your friend. So who has done more to spread nonviolence than our Shri Prabhupada? And Kalki. Kalki came and killed the demoniac elements that were remaining at the end of Kali Yuga. And ushered in the new age of such a yoga. So similarly, like our Srila Prabhupada, by his bold preaching and his jungle clearing, he destroyed the conceptions and nervous nature of Srila and established a platform for the appearance of his intimate friend, like a transcendental tag team. They both, it's so hard to separate Prabhupada from Gurudev. I should have heard once said to me, the father were here, he'd be telling you the same things that I am telling you. And now Shri Gurudev on the platform of Father's teaching is establishing in a more clear way that we could have ever understood 
what was the deepest wish of Srila Prabhupada? And Father, like Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Not only did Prabhupada never leave Vrindavan, but wherever he went, he got to God. For those who were watching on many of these watch and videos these days, but to be in his presence, when he would sing Jaya Ramana before every love of our friends. It was, it was a whole thing that transformed the entire room. Myself, being a young and crazy little devotee, I didn't know where he was, but I sure wanted to be there. And every once in a while, I would just go up and come and look and check his fledging disciples to see how they were. And again, he'd go to be in Vrindavan, Jaya Ramana, singing that song in such a mystical and beautiful way that the whole atmosphere became so changed. But I want to get back to that one point again, real briefly, that you can't really separate Prabhupada. In fact, Srila Prabhupada, his last gesture on his fallen souls that have ever well wished was to reach out with tears in his eyes to the hand of Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Swami Raj and ask him to help train his monkeys to become Srila monkeys. And by the mercy of Srila Gurudev, we come to understand in the most deep way. What is the real glory of Shri Prabhupada? He did so many, he produced so many books, so many temples. He got everyone to chant the holy name, he distributed so much prasana. But by Shri Prabhupada's mercy, everywhere in the world, they glorify Shri Prabhupada. But here in the lotus feet of Shri Prabhupada, the foothills of Govindam, we are understanding in the most perfect way because Prabhupada's connection with Shri Prabhupada is the deepest. And through him, He's connecting us so that we can understand the greatest glory of Shri Prabhupada. There is a maid servant of Shri Prabhupada. And this is his deepest and heartfelt intention for us. And if we serve Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, in heart and soul, then we'll be able to realize the deep intention, the earnest desire of our Shri Prabhupada for us. And one final point. I feel compelled to mention this because so much is being said about supporting the preaching mission of Srila Prabhupada and Srila Guru. And it's my, it's my heartfelt desire to participate in that. But I have to add one thing. The one thread that was always there in Srila Prabhupada's activities, which was the basis. Prabhupada, was his behavior and his activities and what he said were not different. And everything was based on our knowledge. Once in New York, in 1973, on the morning walk, he was describing, they were discussing the challenges he had in establishing the mission in the early days. And Pali Bhagavan went to and said, You very determined, Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, No. This Hare Krishna Mantra is very powerful. And in 1970, Shokala said, My greatest trick is to get you to stop chanting Hare Krishna. Everywhere he went, he distributed this chanting of Hare Krishna. And of course, by the mercy of Guru we're understanding just what name is of Krishna, what Prabhupada's moves were when he's chanting and what he was distributing. But whether it's Krishna Prabhupada or Krishna Guru Dev, the thread is constant. This is chanting of Hare Krishna. But they were having a meeting with the GBC. Uh, Prabhupada said to them, you have had your resolutions and your revolutions. But no solutions. All of you get together and chant Hare Krishna. So this chanting of Hare Krishna, now that the Guru Dev is withdrawing more and more from our vision, experiment, all we really have are his words and the holy name he's given us. And if just like Baba had complete faith in those two things, if in the course of our chanting we go deeper and deeper into his words, his instructions, and the uh, and and the impressions and subscribe that both of them have given us and take them deeply and deeply into our heart. And like Clay Hansmar is so nicely saying, on that basis, come together and share in our remembrances of our beloved Guruans. On that basis, with a lonely heart, we can actually cooperate and push on this Krishna consciousness movement and preserve the actual vision that our spiritual masters so much want us to do. But we can't neglect the process. Srila uh, Sanatana Goswami says to 
to write down the There were some who practiced but do not preach. There were some who preach but do not practice. But you render the best service to the Holy Name. You do both. And in the Jaya Dharma, I believe it's quoted from the Mahabharata, he says, those who preach but do not practice wreak havoc in society. So all of us have this obligation to each other, to ourselves, and to our gurus, to stay deeply connected to the process of sadhana pleasure that they're giving us. And on that basis, cooperate heart and soul to push on this Krishna consciousness movement and extend the family and go to all over the world. Thank you. Now I'd like to call on one of Shri Gurudev's very dear servitors who has done a tremendous amount of seva to his lotus feet through all these years from the time when he began his western touring and is one of Shri Gurudev's biggest supporters in many ways. Uh, and uh, he's a senior Vaishnava in our group, hasn't taken Diksha from Prabhupada, but he is very much and it is hard to decide who is qualified and is our Shima rather than Hansa Guru. Charges are 
connected with him, we should speak something about the difference. What was his difference? What special contribution did he make that others didn't make, and perhaps others will never make? So today I was reflecting on the glories of Prabhupada, which are unlimited. And I focused on a few Vaishnava qualities. In particular, Kripalu, which is the first of 26 qualities described in Aghavan. Aghavanika, mercy and compassion. Prabhupada has so much overflowing compassion. Paragupaguki, he felt the pain of others. And that's what inspired him to so ardently sacrifice and preach. So by thinking about his qualities and activities, these good qualities and activities can come to us. And we can start to imbibe some of them. If we meditate on the faults of others, those things come to us. If we meditate on the good qualities, and glorify and think about and meditate those good qualities of saintly persons and they will come to us. So Karanita, he was so merciful. He did something that no one else has ever done. He took the esoteric deep Siddhanta of our Gaudiya Vaishnava line from the beginning to the topmost Radha Krishna's Dila in Radha Kona and Bodhana and Vrindavan. And he translated it in such a way that common people could appreciate and understand it. Bhaktivinoda Thakur also wrote so many books in English and he had this unique quality. One of the qualities of the devotee is Kavi, a poet, or a great writer. We know that Prabhupada was a very prolific writer, but not just writing books and publishing in massive quantity, but writing such transcendental literature that changed the hearts of all of us, made us devotees. People just received his books and they surrendered. So these Bhakti Yananda reports, which he said would serve as the spiritual law books for the next 10,000 years, he poured his heart, all his God, into these writings. No one would be here, I think none of the Western disciples myself, and Gurudev would not have an international mission without Prabhupada. Without his mercy, without his connection, connecting the entire world with this very beautiful, rich tradition, culture, philosophy, religion, Vaishnava Dharma, Sanatana Dharma, how could we have understood these things? He's like the representative of Yasa who connects the center with everything else in the circumference. He is the Guru. But his speciality is that he was able to engage the entire world. He could engage householders. He could engage businessmen. He could engage hippies, women, those outside Veda culture. And he was criticized by his god brothers and still to this day, and he's criticized by other institutions. They don't understand how much of a Saragrahi Vaishnava. He took the essence of all the teachings. And he implemented it. He translated it. He made it so that we could all come and live in a house. He built a house for the whole world, you know this saying? 
I was at uh, his samadhi the other day, and as I touched my head to back up the samadhi doing my practice, a thought came to me, oh, if this movement and our movement and other Vaishnava movements to join together to conquer the whole world. Prabhupada often gives the example of the lame man and the blind man. In the rich Indian culture of India, it has so much vision, so much jnana, and so much big jnana, but it's somewhat lame because there isn't material prosperity there. But in the West, they have material prosperity, they have knowledge of how to organize, how to manage. You see how Prabhupada's movement was spread all over the world. That was not done by one nationality. It was done by the combination of all the nations all over the world. Americans, English, Spanish, etc. So because he was expert and allowing everyone to fit into his society, allowing everyone to be engaged in a meaningful way, so that everyone felt empowered, and they felt that this is my mission. And even to this day, he's been gone since 1977, so that's 33 years. His mission is continuing, growing so many temples, and someone can say, well, there's something lacking there. There's always something lacking, but what is good we should see. What, what Prabhupada had given, and what is still being preserved, and what they're still doing, we should appreciate. And if they can appreciate us, and we can appreciate them, I don't know, I have no idea, but I like to think that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is prediction that the holy name will be chanted in every town and village and that everyone will take the Krishna consciousness can come and come true. In the Papa Prana there was one king named Rupu Mangala and he believed in following a codice so strictly he used to send his soldiers and messengers on the back of an elephant beating a drum saying anyone who is between the age of 5 and 70 or 80 years old must follow the prophecy otherwise they'll be banished from my kingdom or they'll be severely punished or they'll be killed and he himself strictly followed the prophecy his whole kingdom would follow the prophecy everyone was afraid there may be some fear there but because the king himself was following and he was enforcing it strictly, everyone called the Kamasi. Yamaraj complained, no one's coming to my kingdom. Everyone's leaving this world, they're going to my country, there's a long queue going back home, back to God. Chitragupta had nothing to do, they came to Lord Rama and had, had bowed down, feeling very, you know, morose. So Brahma created this beautiful incarnation, both from his mind and what he needs, beautiful woman, trying to chant with Mukha, Maharaj with Mukha. But even to the point where he was going to kill his own son, he went and gave up the cost. That woman tried to entice him in many ways, but she was more beautiful than, than any celestial man. So my point is that. If the strong determination is there in Bhakti, in order to prove life that you have brought by hand, then the entire world can become Krishna consciousness. The entire world become, can become Vaishnava. Because it is, it's in our soul. It is the natural position of the Jiva. It's just that the conditions for engaging in Krishna consciousness, feeling included, feeling inspired and 
getting association, all of those things must be there. And then everyone will automatically become the boy. So, on this day, I'm praying to A.C. Bhakti Vinod Swami Prabhupada that he may bestow his blessings on all of us and all his disciples. That we can remember his very beautiful, strong qualities of devotion, Guru Nishtha, that we can continue to imbibe his teachings, read his books, distribute his books, and somehow unite to spread the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all Vaishnavas. If we can externally cooperate together, at least there should be a respectful mood and some loving feelings towards each other. And then we can, in that way, cooperatively spread the mission and preach Krishna consciousness all over the world. Then, I think, but Prabhupada, the foundation that he built, that he established here, will not go in vain. It will be built on more and more, and it will smile upon us and bless us all. May see Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki!
months. And we can see that of all the instructions of the attorneys, this is one instruction that's been sorely, sorely lacking the cooperation of our Vaishnavs. So now I feel we're coming to a new milestone in Mahaprabhu's movement. And they say if one door closes, another door opens. So I hope this door that opens is the door of our heart and that it will foster a deep understand, a deeper understanding of what really Krishna consciousness is and how we can foster a cooperative relationship among the Vaishnavas, how we can actually love Sri Guru you know, beyond dreading dust from his feet and causing so many problems and headaches for Guru Maharaj that we should give him such happiness by learning his cooperation and understanding that by serving his teachings, we're serving the true Sri Guru Dev that will never ever die had no beginning and will have no end. And maybe we'll be able to taste a little bit of this divine love that he's teaching us. It's there in his books. It's there in his character. It's there in his teachings. It's everything in his whole life he's served. How many years? His whole life he's given us. And now we can give him a little bit of solstice. Just as we give Sri Prabhupada by learning this cooperation among one another, how to love one another, how to nurture one another, instead of criticizing and fault finding and second guessing. Sure we probably could do better. But by spreading money on our own and cooperating among one another, actually we can make sure we were extremely happy. And his truth is Guru and his Guru Dave all the way back to Mahaprabhu. So I don't want to trouble you. I know I'm going to set sore legs and tired, but I did become inspired when I think about Sri Prabhupada. He gave us so much. He told us, I made you fortune. Now you make others fortune. This was his end. He said, do a little for Krishna today, do a little more tomorrow. This is the essence of advancing in Bhakti. Just do a little bit today. A little bit tomorrow. Shravanam Kirtanam, Shravanam Mahatma. This is what we did. This is how we began our Krishna conscious career. We did a little menial service. It doesn't take a big, big project. It's a little bit one, one at a time, keeping our lives connected with the Vaishnavas and Sri Harinam. And then the saffron particles of Uttama Shloka Mani Mukha Jukha Mukha Adam Mukha Sudhakana Nila. These favorable breezes coming from the Jyoti, from the lotus feet, from the ephosis of the rays of the nails of Sri Harinam Prabhu will come into our heart. Surely we'll remember and feel some happiness, some ecstasy that we've never felt before, that nothing in the material world can give us, not money, drugs, sex, anything, big building, big cars, nothing can give us, which is why we're here, sitting on a, a humble mat with our legs crossed, no big street TVs, just don't hear it. And uh, giving up pretty much almost all the material pleasures that we could easily have just to be in the association of devotees and enjoying the gadam of the sadhus, the saints, and chanting Harinam together, hearing the vibration, purifying one another, purifying ourselves, and becoming happy. And that's what Srila Prabhupada actually wanted. He wanted us all to be happy. Wanted us to be happy and loving one another, and then love for Krishna will come. So, thank you very much.
help me deal with all these members that are fighting the opposing army. So service and separation. She went to Radhani feel so much separation from her beloved Krishna. So much fever is there. The dries and sakis, they, they put sandalwood help on her transcendental body. But because of the fire of her separation from her beloved, it's being turned to dust. However, when she met Radhani, the scorching sun, amongst so many fires, cooking for her beloved, absorbing herself in so many preparations, so many messages, and anticipating so many meetings, in that, in that service and separation, she's feeling very cool by this transcendental association, by her free her own mood. Shri Prabhupada said it, his heart is, are these books, his purports are so much his heart, and by distributing his books, preaching his message to others, we're pumping his blood. Like some of the others, I didn't have hardly any personal association with that Babu of Shri Prabhupada. But in Dedicating myself to distributing his books and trying to spread his teachings in whatever bigger way I could. I felt, and so many devotees felt in that service, his very deep presence. And by the way, it says, Krishna tells our doom. Yomam Pashati Sarvatra Sarvatra Aham Mari Pashati. For one who sees me everywhere and everything in me, I am never lost, nor is 